Good afternoon. It's so good to see you here as we have joined together the memorial service for Frank Marsh. We welcome all the members of the family. May God be with you each and all the friends in the community and the area. God's grace and his strength are what we depend on during all of these times. May we join in prayer. Lord our God, we thank you for this day. It's always challenging when we come together <coughs> to grieve over someone that we've cared about, to remember someone who's no longer here. We remember your great gift to us of eternal life in Christ Jesus. And I pray that you will help us to honor you and bring glory to the name of Christ as we spend this time together thinking and meditating and remembering Frank Marsh. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Would you please, if you'd like to sing, turn over to number 107 in the hymnal, or it's also in the song sheet. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. share with you some memories and uh, it begins with reading of the obituary. Frank Frederick Marsh was born November 14, 1931 in rural Arthur County, Nebraska. He's the son of Ira and Ida Colburn Marsh and he received his education in the Arthur County Schools. He entered the United States Navy in 1950 and he served in the Korean War. Frank served on the destroyer DSS Irwin, which is DD-794, for almost a year. The USS Eaton, which is DD-510, for three years. And the USS Vogue Sand, which is DD-710, for three months. He was a boiler tender, 
And after discharge in 1954, he returned to Arthur and he worked on the Marsh, Marsh Ranch, raising hay and cattle, and he also worked at other of the ranches from the area. He was employed at the Arthur Ranch Supply, a filling station and a garage for several years. He was a good mechanic and an inventor of his own machinery. He raised the garden, enjoyed fresh tomatoes, he cut firewood, swept out his own chimney. He loved his pet kitties and loved living on his property, not wanting to be anywhere else. Frank supported and attended the home games of the Arthur County Wolves football team as well. Preceding him in death were his parents and his sisters, Inez Kohler, Irene Armstrong, Lois Schultz, Lola Kaufmel, is that pronounced properly? And his brothers, Edwin, Cecil, Barton, Donald, and Alan, who is also called Sam. He has one surviving sister, Roberta Kennedy of Sandy, Oregon, and many nieces and nephews. And it's a delight to welcome you all as we are here to honor Frank's memory and to remember the Lord. There was an interview that Frank had, and it was recorded. It was done around 20 years ago. It was recorded with Marty Bassa, who was a student in elementary school at that time. And I was given an opportunity to look at that. And it was very interesting as Laura Pooney um, taped that. He talked about the homestead in Northern Arthur County. The Marsh family had moved to the village by the time he was getting along in school just a little bit. And so he therefore attended and graduated from Northern Arthur County Schools. And as mentioned earlier, he, he worked for Bob Kinsman at the ranch supply. It was interesting to hear statements about Frank, and we always try to remember good things, don't we? However, there are times when sometimes it's interesting to understand some of the other parts of a person, too. So I want to be very careful how I say this. Frank was quite used to living alone on the ranch, and he had become a private person in many ways. He shared his opinions, and yet the fascinating part is he was still appreciated and loved in other ways. He liked to visit the feed store, and as mentioned, the football games, and some of the other outside can, uh, community events. And he did attend some of our worship services. And he has been recorded in our membership list as someone who was baptized on August 6, 1944, by Reverend C.E. Hamilton, who was the pastor at that time. And he got to, he was coming to the senior dinners quite regularly for the last period of time. And so, I'm sure that you have many other memories about Frank, and I know that we cherish those kinds of things. If there is one thing we try to remember is that the Lord God loves all people. There's no one he doesn't love, and the blood of Christ has been given for each person, regardless of his past or his present, because Jesus Christ is the Savior, and he came to save all people. I don't have any additional memories right now to share with you, unless there's someone who, who wants to share something from the family or anything like that. I do. Do you? Please come up then. <coughs> I'm not used to doing this, so bear with me. I want to thank the community and all the family and friends of Arthur County. I know you're a close-knit family because you keep an eye on everybody in your community. Um, over the years, and I know maybe several have passed away, would tell my mom and dad, I'm Shirley Marsh Davis. I'm Donald Marsh's daughter. And um, and this is my mom and Vera, Vera Marsh. But anyway, over the years, uh, neighbors would tell my mom and dad about my uncle if he needed um, health care or just keep uh, tabs on my uncle. So I know you're a close-knit community. 
Um, the marches would have uh, reunions. Uh, when you had an all-school reunion, the marches would have their reunion also. So my family and I, we, a lot of our family members have been to the reunions. And um, I want to tell on our daughter, we have uh, a junior college, I didn't even add this, but we have EWC um, College in Twentington. And it's a, uh, known for a vet clinic and well -being. But at our daughter, you had, was it a 100 or 50 year reunion? I bet there was t-shirts available. And she went to the college and a young lady come up to her and said, you don't know where Arthur, Nebraska is? And, she, and our daughter said, yes, I do. My grandpa's from there. But anyway, several, a, two, a couple of years ago, Travis Wenzel has been le leasing my uncle's uh, property. And Travis told me he didn't complain about not feeling good. So we thought he better go back and check on him. And he found him fainted by his pickup. So the your ambulance team and someone with oxygen helped my uncle and got him to Scott's Bluff and then they, I say he had a special hol helicopter ride to Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. My dad left me a message. My husband and I had been to Gordon and when I got the message it was about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night and he says your uncle is in Scott's Bluff Hospital and will wake up for three or four days. Well when I, my husband and I got there he was awake. And he had all these tubes and, and he, on him, and he wanted them off immediately. But the medical care wouldn't take them off because he wasn't ready to have them all taken off. So I found out later the medical team didn't even think my uncle would make it. Our uncle wouldn't make it. Uh, so he had to have some therapy and, and, uh, and be in the hospital about over a week, wasn't it? Or almost and then they brought him to Ogallala to with some rehab. But the hospitalist at Scott's Bluff uh, really clicked with my uncle. And he knew what kind of man he was. He's quiet and independent. He says, uh, what, did you, what did you do for a living? And he said, you raised cattle. He says, do you know you're helping McDonald's with their Big Macs? <laughs> and so that made me um, smile. So then, my, uh, uh, the doctor told me to talk to my uncle, and I knew what that was all about, get his brain going. So my uncle, that's why the, uh, his obituary says, those three destroyers he served on, he told me their names and their numbers. So I researched on the internet, to, and I thought, well, I'll just get all the general um, ships, but no way, I had to plug in each ship and to make sure that was number. And I had written it on a really tiny piece of paper when my uncle gave me that information. It was on the back of his menu and it's just like a receipt, but something told me to write them down. So when I was checking on them, if they were all true. Those ships, that's the ones he served on. And he knew how long he served on them. There's one particular story though, the USS Eaton. He told me their ship hit a submarine, a United States submarine, and tore off the periscope. And I go, how come you knew that? He says, well, I was in the engine. I was an engine man. I heard it. And he was sure that some brought, but he probably got uh, in trouble. But I don't know this. But when I looked this up, and I have to read this to you, in the early 1950s, Eaton collided with a surfacing submarine but the following destroyer, destroyer <coughs> averted worse collision owing to quick action of the captain. The collision resulted in damage to the submarine's periscope and co coning, tower? coning tower. So it was right there, the truth. I mean, the, the very story that Uncle Freddie told me. And so later, I don't know if he wants to get on the internet and look, but there was also in 56, uh, damaged the Wisconsin bow from the collision with the Eaton. And there's a real tiny picture on there, and it, um, the bow, there's a big chunk dented into it. I don't know if you can see it, but when you get on the internet. So my uncle was very special. He was very independent, like the pastor said. He liked his own space. Um, but one friend here, he's probably here, he said he was one of a kind, and he certainly was. And um, my uncle could make something out of nothing. His machinery 
It was quiet, and he uh, took great pride in working on his um, machinery. And in, uh, my dad and him, um, my uncle could get right up on his tractor. Dad and my dad and him talked to how he could put something on it. I'm, I'm not sure what it was all about, but they made it so. My uncle, when we took him home, uh, my, my husband and I went and brought him home after he recovered, and he showed us how he could get up on that tractor slick. He was a whistle. So that I'm very proud of my uncle with what he's done in, in the military life that he led. Thank you. An amazing life in so many ways. Is there one other memory that you would like to share? Well, would you then go over to In the Garden, number 588, which is also in the hymnal number 588, but it's also on the sheet. So, thank you. He promised in the Bible that all who put their faith in Christ will be saved. And it is valuable for us to remember His precious promises to us about salvation. In John it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, His only one and only Son, that is, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Later in John, Jesus is speaking to good friends, and His very precious friends were Martha and Mary and Lazarus, and Lazarus had died. 
and grieving Martha came out to speak with Jesus about this. And Jesus greeted her with this statement, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus gave us a better understanding of who he is and what he does when Jesus answered her by saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asked Martha, do you believe this? This morning in our worship service we were studying from John chapter 16, which is also a very important promise. Jesus speaking, the disciples said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would go and I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. I know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas, one of the disciples, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And that's where Jesus answered simply by saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. As we consider the incredible gift of life that Jesus brings, he wants it to be very personal too. He doesn't just want it to be a blanket statement. He wants us to receive Him, understand that He is the way, the truth, and the life. The Apostle Peter, sometime later, would write, You know, it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was redeemed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, so your faith and hope are in God. And the Apostle Paul would write in chapter 10 of Romans, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And going on, he said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There's times of wonder. How can we really know? And we understand that the way that we really know is it's because God has promised it to us that Christ has done the work. And He calls us to understand that we call and believe on Him. And therefore, at the conclusion of our life here, we have a chance to be with Him for all eternity. We know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who made us for this very purpose. He has given us the Spirit as a de deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are already always confident and know that as long as we're home in the bodies, we are away from the Lord, but we live so we live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due Him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Yes, it's a challenge, isn't it? To come 
and still be breathing. And think about the person who is no longer breathing. And think about the person that we've loved or cared about, the neighbor, the family member, the people who are part of our lives. What's next? Sometimes we say, Lord, how is this going to work out? And he says, come to me by faith. Believing in Christ Jesus, who is our hope. And who is the one who provides the resurrection. The same Apostle Paul would write at the end of his life, as he wrote to second, in 2 second Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who long for his appearing. Dr. Billy Graham wrote a book called Where I Am, Heaven, Eternity, and Our Life Beyond. And in that book he wrote, that I wish I had preached more on the resurrection of Christ because without it the world, there would be no gospel. It is the resurrection that completes the work that Jesus came to do so that we can live a resurrected life now. Christ did not stay on the cross. He was raised from the dead. He is alive. In his last years as Chancellor of Germany, Konrad Audenauer invited me for a visit. It was a surprise that he even knew I existed. When we met, he looked at me with his blazing eyes and said, Young man, I invited you for one thing. I want to know, do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? And Billy Graham answered, I do, sir. And he replied, so do I. And then he made a very powerful declaration. Life has no meaning whatever is if Christ is still in the grave. Amen. The risen Christ has promised to give immortality to all who believe in his name. No longer do people need to stumble in the fog of hopelessness. There is a light that shines brighter than the noonday sun. Christ's resurrection is what gives us hope. It is the first stage of eternal life in him. The first glorious step on the journey of choosing Christ. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, we will certainly be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. One of the things that happens is when I visit with people, I always pray for them, and yet I don't always know the answer to what is the level of their own personal faith. Have they personally given themselves to Christ Jesus and given their lives to him? And it's not up for me to me to have to know for everyone. I've never felt that I had to worry about that, except that I wanted to be as good a pastor as I could for them, but lead them to the one who is the master, the one who is the Lord, the one who gave his life on the cross so that all of our sins could be given, forgiven, and covered with his blood. And there will be some day when we all see Christ face to face. And there will be some day when He will look at us. He who knows everything about all of us. And He will be able to understand whether we're true believers or not. Whether we're following Him or not. He still gives us all hope. He still gives us all His protect, incredible love he still wants us to follow Him and put our faith in Him. And yet, do we? I hope we do. And I pray that we can sing along with all of those others who put their faith in Christ. That when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And if you have the insert, we don't have this in our church hymnal, so I cannot give you that one. 
But I would invite you, if you'd like, to stand and we'll sing. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. for the hope that you've given us in Jesus Christ. For the good news of the gospel which tells how you came to earth with the very special purpose of living and teaching us and doing wonderful things, but mostly of dying on the cross for all of our sins and then rising from the grave. And so, Lord, we ask that in your way and in your grace, you will speak to each one of us so that we might trust you completely. That we might find that our hope is in you. That we trust you because your blood has covered our sins and you've made us into new people. So guide us now as we adjourn to the cemetery. And now we say to the King, immortal, eternal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.